South Australia is cutting its biggest city open for the $15.4 billion Torrens to Darlington project. This 10.5-kilometer motorway costs $1.47 million for every single meter. That's the price of digging two 15-meter-wide tunnels, as tall as a five-story building, directly underneath hundreds of homes and even a 100-year-old historic theater. The goal is to finally bypass 21 frustrating traffic lights. But to do it, engineers must move 3.9 million cubic meters of earth, all while the city above holds its breath. How do you dig a hole this big under a living city and stop it from caving in? That question is not an exaggeration. For decades, Adelaide has had a serious problem. It is the only mainland capital city in Australia without a non-stop motorway running through its metro area. The city has a 78-kilometre north-south corridor, but right in the middle, there is a 10.5-kilometre gap, a bottleneck known as South Road. This isn't just an annoying road, it's a failing artery. More than 120,000 vehicles try to push through it every single day. The traffic is so bad that the average speed is just 20 kilometers per hour. Worse, this stop-start traffic makes it incredibly dangerous. The crash rate on this one section is up to 11 times higher than the modern motorways it's supposed to connect to. This daily gridlock costs the state's economy more than $230 million every year in lost time and fuel. The Torrens to Darlington, or T2D, is the final massive puzzle piece designed to fix this. It will connect the 78-kilometer corridor and let drivers save up to 40 minutes on their peak hour commute. But this isn't just about saving time. It's about fixing a 10.5-kilometer long problem that's 11 times more dangerous than a normal highway. But how do you replace a road that 120,000 cars still need to use every day? You can't. You have to build a new one. To build this motorway, you can't just send in a single machine. The 10.5-kilometer T2D project is a hybrid, a complex system built with three different construction methods, each chosen for a specific job. The first method is the most disruptive. It's called cut and cover. It is exactly what it sounds like. You cut a massive deep trench into the ground, build a concrete tunnel box at the bottom, and then cover it back up so a new road or park can go on top. This method is used for the shallow parts of the project at the very beginning and end of the tunnels. These trenches also serve a second purpose, they become the launch boxes, where the giant tunnel boring machines are assembled and begin their journey. These are not small trenches. To create the launch box for the southern tunnels, crews are building 35-meter-deep diaphragm walls. That's like building a 10-story building underground before any tunneling can even start. The second method is the open motorway. This is the cut without the cover. For about 2.5 kilometers, the new motorway will be a lowered road, sitting in a permanent open trench that keeps it below the existing ground level. This open air section is critical. It acts as the central connection point between the two main tunnels. It's here that the project builds new bridges and exit ramps to connect the underground highway back to the surface, giving drivers access to key routes like Richmond Road James Congdon Drive, the airport, and the city's CBD. The third method is the star of the show, TBM tunneling. This is the keyhole surgery part of the build. This method is used for the longest and deepest sections, creating the four kilometer long southern tunnels and the 2.2 kilometer long northern tunnels. Tunneling is the only way to build this road deep underground allowing the communities and businesses on the surface to continue completely undisturbed. But these open trenches are the most disruptive, noisy and visible parts of the build. The real magic, the $15.4 billion magic, happens where you can't see it. To dig 6.2 kilometers of tunnels under a living city, you need a different kind of machine. You need a monster. 
the T2D project will use three massive tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, working at the same time to build the northern and southern tunnels. These are not just drills, they are mobile, subterranean factories bought from the world's leading manufacturer, HeronConnect. The scale is hard to understand. Each TBM is around 100 meters long. That's longer than a soccer field. The spinning cutter head on the front has a diameter of around 15 meters. To give you a local comparison, that is as tall as the historic Theberton Theatre or the Bunnings Building in Edwardstown. So how does this 100 meter long monster work? The TBM does five jobs at once. First, the giant 15 meter cutter head spins and shaves the earth away at the tunnel face. Second, it controls the pressure. This is the most important secret to tunneling in soft ground. If you just dig a hole, the wet, soft earth will collapse. To stop this, these TBMs use a technology called Earth Pressure Balance, or slurry shield. They use the material they just dug, or a special wet clay called bentonite slurry, to create a high-pressure plug at the front of the machine. This plug perfectly balances the pressure of the earth and water outside the TBM. It's like holding a tube of toothpaste. The machine applies just enough pressure to stop the ground from oozing in, which is what prevents the city above from sinking. Third, it removes the muck. As the TBM shaves the earth, a giant screw conveyor pulls the high-pressure material from the front, depressurizes it, and drops it onto a long, enclosed conveyor belt. This belt runs all the way out of the tunnel, carrying the spoil away. Fourth, it builds the tunnel. As the TBM digs, a robotic arm inside the machine, called a segment erector, is busy building the permanent tunnel lining. It grabs huge, curved pieces of precast concrete, called segments, and fits them together to form a complete ring. Fifth, it moves. This is the genius part. How does the TBM move forward? It uses massive hydraulic cylinders to push against the new concrete ring it just finished building. It literally builds its own path and pushes off it to move forward. This entire factory, with up to 20 people working inside, moves forward at a rate of 8 to 10 meters per day. That might not sound fast, but remember, it's not just digging. It's digging, supporting the earth, removing the muck, and building a finished, waterproof, concrete tunnel all at the same time. The TBM is a hungry machine. It will be fed by a 24-7 logistical operation with 27-meter-long, multi-service vehicles constantly driving into the tunnels to deliver the more than 50,000 concrete segments needed for the project. This 100-meter-long machine is the perfect solution for digging. But digging is only half the problem. The TBM creates a second, massive challenge. What do you do with the 3.9 million cubic meters of ground it eats? This project faces three enormous challenges that have nothing to do with digging. First, the spoil. The TBMs will excavate a staggering 3.9 million cubic meters of earth. That is enough rock and soil to fill the Adelaide Oval Stadium, from the grass to the roof, more than twice. This muck can't just be piled up. To control dust, it's moved on enclosed conveyors. To control noise, it's dumped and processed inside special acoustic sheds. The approved plan is to move it all to a spoil reuse facility at Gilman. But this creates a new problem. Getting it there will require a constant parade of trucks, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with one truck arriving every three to four minutes for years. The second challenge is a hold your breath moment for the entire project, the Theberton Theatre. This is a 100 year old state heritage listed building loved by locals. The entire reason the project was redesigned to use tunnels in the first place was to save this theatre from being demolished. But this has created an unbelievable engineering risk. The 15 meter tall TBMs will pass directly underneath the historic building. 
If the TBM's face pressure is too low for even a moment, the ground will subside or sink and the 100-year-old foundation will crack. If the pressure is too high, it will heave the ground up, breaking the building from below. The margin for error is zero. The third challenge isn't geological, it's legal. How do you legally build a six-lane highway under hundreds of private homes and businesses? The answer is, you change the law. The South Australian government amended the Land Acquisition Act in July 2020, specifically for this project. This new law allows the government to acquire only the underground land from 10 metres or three storeys beneath a property. The homeowner still owns the surface, but the government now owns the strata deep underground. This single legal change is what made the T2D possible, saving an estimated 300 more homes from being demolished. This combination of new laws, 24-7 logistics and high-stakes engineering leads to the biggest question of all. Is it worth the price? This deep dive comes at a staggering and controversial cost. $15.4 billion. That is a massive jump from an earlier $9.9 .9 billion plan, working out to $1.47 million for every single meter. The project has faced heavy criticism. An Infrastructure Australia evaluation in 2022 gave the project a benefit-cost ratio of 0.7, indicating that its costs exceeded its economic benefits. While supporters argue that wider economic benefits push that number to a positive 1.2, the cost is already having an impact. Federal funding has been stripped from five other South Australian road projects and redirected to help pay for the T2D. And for those hundreds of homeowners who will have a highway built under their properties, the amended Land Acquisition Act states that because their surface land isn't used, no compensation is payable a fact that remains a major point of criticism. The first massive pieces of the TBMs arrived in Adelaide in late 2025. The main tunnelling works are set to begin in the second half of 2026, with the entire 78-kilometre non-stop motorway scheduled to open to traffic in 2031 finally. This project is a massive $15.4 billion gamble, Will it be the engineering miracle that finally solves Adelaide's gridlock? Or is it a 10.5 kilometre hole in the ground? Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you love learning about epic engineering, make sure to like, subscribe to the Ultimate Mega Builds channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a build.